as it seeks to erase Christianity from the landscape. The Islamic State allows no Christian symbols. It just released these photographs, which show the desecration of the church at what is believed to be the monastery of Mar Gorgas, just north of Mosul. And nothing is sacred. ISIS blew up this mosque shortly after taking control here. It's a site holy to both Christians and Muslims. It's nothing new. The persecution of Christians around the world has in recent years taken on epidemic proportions. But the world has far too often cast a side view of the attempted extermination and not viewed it as something worth real time to deal with. Now 60 Minutes dealt with the issue Sunday night and perhaps, just perhaps, some eyes are being opened on an issue we here at Midpoint refuse to let go away. It's a pleasure to welcome back President of the Iraqi Christian Relief Council, fellow at the Philos Project, and executive producer of the new film about churches and religious persecution, Sing a Little Louder, Juliana Tamarazzi joins us today. Juliana, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you. It's always an honor to be with you. I saw the report on 60 Minutes on Sunday night, and the first thing that struck me was here was a global network, one of the major networks finally paying some attention to this, and it still brings up the question, Juliana, these people are being systematically exterminated. Why does the world not pay closer attention to this? I believe it's a Christian issue. There is an attack against the Christian church in the West and in the East. And this is why the world is silent. We're why? afraid. But, but why though, Juliana, why is there? Because we are told that Christians are not one of those religions that usually are focused on and people are looking to exterminate. Why? Because we're too afraid to offend Muslims. We're too afraid to even offend Islamist extremists. We don't even call it what it is, Ed. And uh, therefore, who pays the heaviest price is those innocent victims in the East, Christians and other minorities like Yazidis. And this is why we have formed Iraqi Christian Relief Council. This is why we are working with the Philos Project. And I'm now the executive producer for this very important, short but important docudrama, Sing a Little Louder, to really wake up America and the West. What will the docudrama, the documentary that you're talking about here, what will it bring to the American people and to the world that they may not have known before? It will remind uh, Christians that the Christian churches throughout Germany sang literally louder and louder as the Jews and others were being taken to their death camps on trains. It will touch the conscience of people to give them another opportunity for them to stand with the Eastern churches. There are bishops and archbishops uh, that have gone on camera and wept and have pleaded with their fellow, uh, the same rank, people at the same rank, and bishops and uh, the bishops and archbishops in the West, they've pleaded for help. And yet there is very little help that is going to the East. Juliana, would you put what is happening to Christians today on the same par as the Holocaust of Jews in World War II? Absolutely. The Assyrian Christians Holocaust was 1914 through 1918 alongside of the Armenians and, and Greeks. Our uh, one year, uh, our 100 year anniversary is on April 15th of 2015. And yet again, this is going on um, again in front of our eyes. And there's so much that people can do. There is so much that they can you know, for example, today Ted Cruz announced for his run for presidency. We're very excited. This is our chance as the Assyrian Christians in the West to approach whoever is running for candidacy to make sure that religious liberty is on their radar. Um, and also, very exciting for the Sing a Little Louder team, Congressman Wolf, who's been a champion of religious liberty, has endorsed this very important 10-minute movie. So people can get involved by visiting our website, iraqichristianrelief.org, or singloudermovie.com. Juliana, here's a tough question for you, but do you think that maybe the networks, the people, the world doesn't really think, maybe even America as well, doesn't think too much about what's happening to the Christians in the East simply because they see it as part of ISIS. They see it as part of the Muslim struggle. And basically, and I know again this is difficult, they lump it all into one big group and say, let them all stay over there, let them all do what they want to do, let them all kill each other and we don't care. Is that a possibility? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I've heard so many times as I go around the country and make presentations, this is the same exact sentiment I hear from uh, not many, but from people. They say, well, you know, they have lived with these atrocities, meaning these Christians, for centuries. Let them either leave their homeland or let them stand up and become equipped with military to defend themselves with military equipment. First of all, we as Christians have always taken the love route, the passive route, but enough is enough. We have have to be equipped to defend ourselves. The Kurds are equipped to defend themselves. The Iraqi military has weapons. Why shouldn't the Christians and Yazidis be equipped to defend themselves? That's number one. Number two, if we in America and in the West still believe that ISIS and um, organizations like Al-Shabaab, Al-Nusra and others and Muslim Brotherhood are not in our neighborhoods, we're gravely mistaken. This is going to knock on our doors. And if we stand in unity with the uh, Eastern Christians, as St. John Paul II called it, the Eastern uh, lung of the church, then in turn, we will be prepared to defend ourselves when it does come to our home here in America. You mentioned taking the love route, and that's what many people will say. They will talk about the religions and say, God would not want you to pick up weapons. God would want you to take the love route. However, going that way, you're being exterminated. So is it time then, in deference to what the Bible, the religion says, whatever, for Christian militias to create those militias in the East, to pick up a weapon and to start killing those, to start finding those and defending themselves and killing those who are looking to kill them? We have to. We have to. We have been exterminated from that region. For another 100 years, Ed, if we don't stand up and defend ourselves, our language, which is Aramaic, four million of us are left in the world, it will be extinct, and we as an Assyrian people will be extinct. And next you will read about us in as Mayans and icons, we read about them, um, Incas rather. But remember, our monuments were defaced. Our thousands of year old historical figures were all shattered. So what they're aiming to do, not only cleanse us religiously, they're cleansing us ethnically as well. And this is where the women rights organizations have to stand up because our girls are being sold in sex slavery. There are the human rights organizations that are silent. And the church is singing louder and louder through uh, their choirs to drown out the cries of the Christians from the East. I only have a few seconds it's left, Juliana. Where can they see the movie? SingLouderMovie.com is where you can see the trailer. IraqiChristianRelief.org uh, is where you can contact us and we can bring this movie to your churches. SingLouderMovie.com and IraqiChristianRelief.org. I urge everybody to watch it. It's important. Juliana Tamarazzi, we thank you so much for joining us. We hope to speak to you again with some better news sometime soon. God willing. Thank you so much, Ed. God willing indeed. Thank you so much, Juliana. Stay with us. Midpoint will continue.